Hello, in this short video, <clears throat> we are going to discuss the final topic in this uh, segment of market equilibrium. Now, we have looked in the past on how to think about quantity demanded and also quantity supplied. Now, we bring those two concepts together to discuss the very important idea of a market equilibrium. So at this point, the two curves should be familiar to you, right? The quantity demanded slopes downwards and the sub quantity supplied uh, slopes upward, the one in red. So point number one here is at the point where the price, sorry, the quantity demanded and quantity supplies meet, that is the market equilibrium price and quantity, which is PE and QE, okay? So stick with that for a second here. And let's, let's start thinking about what this means in practical reality. So if you were running a pizza shop um, and you know the quantity demanded, the curve of quantity demanded at various prices, right? And you are familiar with what the quantity supplied is going to be at uh, various prices. What I am saying is there is a point where you will maximize your profit and that is the market equilibrium price and quantity, okay? The easiest way to think about this is what happens if you slip from that equilibrium? Two scenarios here, okay? Scenario number one, okay? What happens when the quantity demands, uh, sorry, quantity demanded exceeds the quantity supplied? So this is a scenario where you can see that a dotted line so it touches the uh, the demand curve at much further out than where it touches the supply line, right? So you can see that the quantity demanded is higher than the quantity supplied. What happens in that scenario is you can see that in this case, the price is lower than what the equilibrium. In this scenario, in practical reality, what's gonna happen is price starts going up. Does that make intuitive sense? that when there is much more demand for your product than what is supplied, the normal response of the market is for the price to go up. Yes, that's the indication of a shortage. Now, how much and how far will it go up? The concept here should be clear at this point. It will go up till the point where it hits that equilibrium point where it meets, where those lines meet. And the P there would be the equilibrium price, okay? which is still not clear, let's go to the other side. What happens or what is that surplus thing now? When the quantity supplied exceeds the quantity demanded, that's a scenario of a surplus. So you can see there, the dotted line where it hits the demand line is at a lower point than where it hits the supply line, right? So there's more supply of pizza in the market than what is demand. So in this case, P1, the price one, should be coming down, right? That's the response of the market. When there is surplus, when there is more supply of the product or the service compared to the quantity demanded, the price will come down. How far does it come down? Intuitively at this point, it should make sense that it will come down to the point where there is equilibrium. So ultimately, this is how the market functions. It is a constant battle between supply and demand to find that equilibrium price. And for you, the decision maker, that is the sweet spot as well, figuring out what is the equilibrium price, okay? All right, now finally, one more concept here. What happens when the non-price factors change? So remember, in the scenarios before, you were only moving the prices along the demand curve, for example, right? At various different uh, prices, what is the demand uh, that is existing? In this case, when the non-price factors change, what happens, right? In this case, the S, the supply curve itself will shift and that will create a new equilibrium price and quantity, okay? So let's take, Let's see if that is an example. Yeah, let's take this as uh, S1 to S2. So let's take a non-price factor here. What might be a non-price factor that moves S1 to S2? So let's say one of the non-price uh, factors that moves supply is 
um, there are more producers. Suddenly, there are more producers of pizza in the market. Okay, that has nothing to do with the uh, uh, the indicators of what happens in the one supply curve. It just happens that there are more suppliers now, right? Increased number of suppliers in the market. So S1 moves to S2. What happens to the equilibrium price in that scenario? Equilibrium price comes down. Make sense? This is the scenario where the equilibrium price itself changes. When the non-price factors change, the equilibrium price changes. In this case, it went down. It could go in multiple directions depending on whether it's the demand curve or the supply curve it's moving and which direction it's moving. Okay. Um, and then this takes it one notch above. In the earlier slide, we looked at just the supply curve moving. In this case, both demand curve and supply curve moving. This is, get to the, gets to the ultimate complexity of uh, supply and demand and equilibrium. The constant search for the equilibrium price when both supply and demand are dynamic and non-price factors are impacting both supply and demand. 